Kay's getting ready to go on her first ever deer hunt where she's in the shooter seat. We've been watching a buck all summer. We named him Cracker Jack and he's been coming right where we want him almost every time with the trail cam picks. We're feeling pretty stoked tonight to be able to go and sit and see what happens. Unfortunately, when he finally got close enough for a shot, it was just too dark, so we had to give him the pass. Well, it's November 17th, and it's a Sunday. We just bombed out to the lake for an evening hunt. We're gonna slip into the tower blind. Galen's in the shooter seat, and hopefully she can let the 243 bark on her first whitetail buck. It feels awesome to finally have a deer on the ground like this. My name's Mitchell Payment. I started tagging along with my dad to go hunting basically since I learned to walk. I grew up living the outdoor lifestyle, learning from my dad and any hunting video I could get my hands on as a kid. Once I turned 12, the legal age to hunt, we started taking things more serious than ever. This is our second attempt on getting a buck. Spawn stalk me out there. Working hard and learning through experience to better our odds to fold our tags on the animals we were pursuing. It has helped us grow into who we are now. Welcome to season four of Moment of Truth TV. Got a big head on him, wide ears. I'm at a loss for words. Oh, he's so nice and mature. He is such an awesome buck. I can't commit. He's a dream buck. Look at that drop. <laughs> that was unbelievable. This year was going to be one for the memory books, with my girlfriend Kaylin completing her hunter ed course and picking up a bow for the very first time. This was a first for me also having the pleasure to introduce a new hunter to the sport I care so much about. After attending multiple archery shoots throughout the spring and summer, she got efficient with her bow impressively quick. <gasps> you crushed him. During the summer months, we scouted hard, checking cameras, looking for the perfect buck to target for Kay. When a beautiful mainframe 10 point began to show up on camera, showing signs of consistency and looked to be very patternable, we knew this was the one for Kay. She quickly came up with the name Cracker Jack, or CJ for short, and it was now time to get set up to hunt him for when season comes. Well, we've picked a tree where we're gonna set up the tree stand. It's in a great central area. We got a shot all around. There's a nice, like, almost meadow to our left, trail, heavy trail to our right. Should be good, and we're in cover. So we're gonna get this double up in the tree. Might not be that easy, because it's a heavy one. We just got the tree stand all set up. We're looking good for September. Hopefully Kay can shoot her first buck out of the stand. There's a nice buck coming in here. All in all, that went pretty smoothly and we're gonna head home and enjoy the rest of the evening. With hunting season just around the corner, we were out making sure everything was perfect for opening day. Well, we're out shooting the bows. It's five days till hunting season and we're just doing the last little bit of tweaks. Kaylin's got a nice buck lined up, CJ, hopefully he comes in. 
And dad, who knows what he's gonna do. He might, he might shoot a muley, but <laughs> yeah, that's what I'll be doing filming. That too. <laughs> but they're gonna take a few shots here. Well, the killing sticks are flying and the prime smoke in the target, so Cracker Jack better watch out. Moment of Truth TV is brought to you by RV City, generations of family fun. Old Smokes Coffee, coffee for the courageous. Eye Hunter app, know your regs inside and out. Tacticam, share your hunt. Sights and Arms, your firearm specialists. And by Prime Archery, the most accurate bows on the planet. This segment is brought to you by RV City. For all your trailer, trailer repair, and camping needs. Located in Mournville and Nisku, Alberta. Well, the day we've been working towards and waiting for all summer long is finally here. It's opening day and time to head to the tree stand. We just rolled up to location for this evening's hunt. Kay's getting ready to go on her first ever deer hunt where she's in the shooter seat. We've been watching a buck all summer. We named him Cracker Jack and he's been coming right where we want him almost every time with the trail cam picks, right 20 yards beside our trees yeah. down there. So we're feeling pretty stoked tonight to be able to go and sit and see what happens. There's a pinch point and he's coming out right to these fields to feed and it couldn't be any more ideal. I'm really stoked. We're gonna yeah. get going in and see what happens. About a half an hour of being in the stand, our first deer made an appearance, and from what we could tell from the trail cams, this was CJ's traveling companion. Being Kay's first close encounter, it was shaping up to be a great night. As the night went on and the sun continued to set, the deer action continued. Being covered up in does all night, at last light we caught movement to our left, and there he was, CJ. Standing broadside only 20 yards away behind some brush, he proceeded to stay in the same spot for the next 10 minutes without moving. When he finally decided to come out into the clearing, legal shooting light had passed and it was too dark to shoot. Well, that wraps up our night in the tree stand. It was honestly really cool but there's such thing as having too many deer around you and it was just doe after doe after doe and it was all good until they got behind us and then they started winding us and stomping their feet. CJ came and that's when the, snor the snorting fest began. <laughs> CJ right at last light, he came and he was standing at 20 yards just feeding but all the does beside us and behind us were just snorting and the one sounded like it was having an aneurysm. It was going yeah. crazy. Yeah, they were snorting after we left too. Yeah. yeah. Overall, it was a great night. Did you have fun? Oh yeah, it was so cool. We're just gonna head on home and enjoy the rest of the night. After giving the spot a good break, it was time to head back in for CJ. Okay, it's September the 8th. We're going uh, back into the spot with CJ here. So we got a good um, northeast wind going in here and it's been raining all day. So hopefully the deer are up on their feet and we're just gonna see what happens when we head in here. Yeah. 
having CJ's traveling companion come by us early on in the night. Shortly after he had passed, I caught a glimpse of chocolate antlers in the thick brush. Sure enough, it was CJ only 70 yards away feeding. With lots of daylight left, all we can hope for now is he works his way close enough for a shot. As he continued to graze and make his way closer ever so slowly, it was starting to look promising as he was almost within range. Now only 60 yards away and the little buck coming back through. During the short period of time where our focus was on the little buck, CJ vanished. But after a closer look, we noticed chocolate tine sticking up from the brush. He had bedded. With both bucks bedded right in front of us, it's now a waiting game, keeping a close eye on them, hoping CJ rises from his bed before dark and presents a shot. What had seemed like an eternity, just over an hour had passed burning a lot of daylight, CJ rose from his bed. He continued to graze and work his way in our direction at a great pace that had us getting prepared for a shot. Until he worked his way into the greenery and started to feed on leaves, which put him nearly at a standstill. He had us on the edge of our seats praying he'd present a shot before dark. As the seconds turned into minutes, shooting light was fading fast and he was going to have to make a move quick if it was going to happen. Finally, he came within Kalen's comfortable shooting range at 40 yards, and all he had to do was step out, but he ended up staying in the same spot for 10 minutes, and unfortunately, by the time he stepped out, it was too dark to shoot. He then proceeded to feed on the brush until he faded away in the darkness, and yet again eluded Kalen's arrow. This segment is brought to you by Old Smokes Coffee. Try it yourself and use promo code MOT at oldsmokescoffee.com for 10% off your purchase. A couple days later after our last hunt, on another overcast day, we found ourselves with the perfect conditions to go back in for CJ. An east wind, a light mist, and calm winds. We were hoping third time's the charm, and Kaylin can finally get the opportunity she had been patiently waiting for. Having great deer action shortly after getting into the stand and having all the regular deer in the area come by us, we were completely on edge waiting to see CJ's chocolate rack coming through the brush. But unfortunately, as the night went on, CJ never did make an appearance. As September went on, with a busy hunting schedule and just life getting in the way, hunting CJ went on the back burner. Dad and I found ourselves in the prairies, myself spot and stalking Smoke. mule deer with my bow, and my dad trying to fill his antelope tag that he waited 11 years for. <laughs> yeah. While Kaylin was pursuing her main passion of jumping her horse and working. When October came around, Kaylin found herself with us getting to experience some awesome waterfall action in the prairies of Alberta. <laughs> that was unbelievable. She even managed to accomplish an impressive feat by harvesting her first ever big game animal with her bow, all seen in a prior episode. It's now November, and we're heading back into the whitetail woods with the rifle in hand to see if Kay can keep her streak going and lay the smack down on her first whitetail. Well, we just got to location here, and we're gonna have a couple hundred yard walk into our ground blind that's set up here. Mitch and Roger have had pretty good luck here in the past at this location, so we're gonna try our luck here, see what happens. It's been snowing pretty hard all day, so the deer should be up on their feet feeding because it's fairly cold out, and they're rutting pretty hard too, so hopefully we have good luck here tonight. Uh, 
having a couple does and a spike buck come by made for an awesome night in the blind, but it's now time to head to our property for the following evening to see if we can have a change in big buck luck. Well, we just arrived at the lake. It's beautiful out, it's crisp. It's gonna be around that minus 20 mark while we're here. And so we're just gonna get all settled into the cabin. There's a ton of fresh track on the way in, so it should be should be exciting. Hopefully we can see a shooter buck. I just love deer hunting, and I'm hoping to CK pound one. After having some fun with the local chickadees and getting all dressed up for the minus 20 weather, it was time to head to the tower blind overlooking our oat field for the last couple hours of light. Upon sneaking into the tower blind, we were able to do so quiet enough where there were already a couple does feeding in the field and it was shaping up to be a great night. Having over a dozen does enter the field made for an exciting night. Unfortunately, no bucks made an appearance, but knowing they're not far, we will be right back in the saddle in the morning. Moment of Truth TV is brought to you by Revolution Armory, Canada's best custom shotguns. G5 Outdoors, designed to hunt. Enforcer Ozone, number one predator in odor control. Reveal cellular cameras, always on the hunt. Killing Sticks, where the blood trail begins. And by Score Ammunition, proudly Canadian. This segment is brought to you by Tacticam, the best first person hunting camera on the market. Made for hunters by hunters. Share your hunt. The following morning, we found ourselves back in the blind on the coldest day of fall at a bone chilling 30 below zero. Thinking the cold temps would have the deer up on their feet, it was the exact opposite with only a couple does making an appearance for the morning. After heading back to the cabin to warm up, we were right back out into the blind, hoping the evening hunt has more to offer. With a few does and a beautiful little buck already out in the field, it had us looking forward to the next couple of hours. As the young buck rutting action kept heating up, we were on the edge of our seats waiting for a shooter buck to step out and show them who's boss. Unfortunately, with no shooter bucks making an appearance, but with lots of rutting action keeping us entertained all night, we couldn't wait for our next sit in the blind. The following weekend we found ourselves right back in the saddle, with multiple does already feeding in front of us. It didn't take long for a shooter buck to enter the field. This beautiful buck ended up following a doe towards us and came ever so close to getting a bullet, but just stayed a little too far and never presented a good shot. He ended up following that doe into the bush to not be seen again for the rest of the night. Well, Kay and I are back out at the property. We just came out here, it's a Saturday afternoon. We're gonna sneak up into the tower blind. It's November 23rd, so should be getting to the tail end of the rut here. It's a beautiful night, gorgeous. It's like plus 10, which is uncharacteristic for this time of year, but we're gonna take advantage of it and enjoy the nice weather and hopefully get a buck down on the ground. You excited? Oh yeah. Let's get her done. Upon climbing into the blind, there were already two does feeding in the field. And not two minutes later, 
Kay tapped me on the shoulder, there was a buck right in front of us. And Kay wasted no time. It's been two minutes, we just got settled, and Kaylin's like, there's a buck right here at 50 yards, and she just dropped him. Good job, babe. That was amazing. But that's what it's all about, right there. Just get... Nice job, babe. He just dropped. Did he ever? We're gonna get down out of the blind and go put our hands on Kay's first buck. Well, we just got out of the blind, and we're gonna go see my deer. Let's go. I think we're gonna have a hard time tracking this one. <laughs> he went very far. <laughs> An all of two yards. There he is. First white tail buck. Well, here he is. We dropped him in his tracks just along this fence line right here. He read that script perfectly. That's exactly what we were looking for when we came out here. We just wanted a nice buck to come right here within 60 yards. And I absolutely crushed him. He just dropped right through the shoulder into the neck. And it was just unbelievable. We actually put in a lot of time this year. We tried with the bow and that never panned out. So we were trying here with the gun and put in tons and tons of time and tons of nights and mornings. And it feels awesome to finally have a deer on the ground like this. Yeah, congratulations, babe. You did amazing. In bow season, it was your first time really experiencing hunting as a whole, and I was impressed then. And you carried that on into rifle season. You persevered, and <laughs> tonight it just worked yeah. out. I hope you guys enjoyed this hunt. It was really cool to experience my beautiful girlfriend come going out with her, a new hunter, and she picked up quick. She's a natural. Yeah, thanks for bringing me. No problem. Glad you had fun. Closed captioning is brought to you by RV City, located in Mournville and Nisku, Alberta. Yeah.